Welcome to today's session where I will be explaining and showing a video of how to configure VRRP on Cisco iOS. I had earlier brought you guys a video on understanding VRRP, the overview of VRRP, the usage, and why basically it's using a network setup. So we are going to be considering this topology for same purpose. I have also made a notepad of configuration just to make things easier and faster that shows all our configuration for the VRRP. So for your quick one, let's log in to the routers and check the interfaces. I've also created a console pad here where we have router 1, router 2, router 3 connected via PuTTY. So for your quick one, let's go to router 1. I've done a show IP interface brief. We can see it's none of, no IP is assigned and administratively it is down with a LAN protocol down as well. So for router 2, we can quickly do same. We have something and I believe also for router 3. So good. So we are going to start the configuration using router 1. So for router 1, we quickly go to config mode. I will go to interface first Ethernet 0 of 0 to configure. So for time purposes, I'll open my notepad where I had earlier made some preparation, config preparation and apply same. So this is interface first Ethernet 0 slash 0. And this is as well a config prepared for interface first Ethernet 0 slash 0. So I'm going to be copy pasting to make things fast. Of course, what these lines of configuration means are on, inter on interface first Ethernet 0 slash 0, the IP address this is the physical IP address of the interface. Now, this is the VRRP config. It has an ID of 1 and the priority has been set to 200. Now, the aim is for router 1 to be the master and router 2 the backup. So, for that reason, the priority of router 1 will be higher than the priority of router 2. Now, the authentication text is Cisco. And of course, we've set a three second for the advertising interval. Now, this is the VRRP IP 10.0.254.10 as depicted on the diagram here. And of course, we did a no shutdown to turn on the interface. So let's quickly do the same for router 2. We we'll also copy and paste to save time. Oh, sorry, I guess you're not at the right prompt. We have to be in the interface first. So let's go interface first at an zero slash zero. Then we assign a fiscal IP. Then we configure the VRRP and add. The authentication text which is Cisco you configure the timer and this is the VRRP IP and of course no shut down so for your quick one we're going to be checking what we've done let's check on router one we can do a show VRRP brief So we can see the interface configured is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. The priority is 200, and this is the uptime. And um, the status is master, of course. That's the aim. We want router 1 to be the master and router 2 the backup. So, and this is the master IP address. Meanwhile, we'll see in detail for router 2 as well. Let's take a quick one. Okay, we can see fine. We have the same interface and this is backup. Good. So let's do a detailed VRRP show. So we'll do a show VRRP interface first at an 0 slash 0. We can see that the state is master. The virtual IP is this. And this is the MAC address, of course, for 
the VRP. The, the MAC address is learning for the VRP. This advertisement interval we set three seconds from here. We enabled preemption and the parity is 200. Now, the authentication as well, we used Cisco for the text, is also enabled. But something is important, you have to look at the master router. The physical IP address, which is local to this router, is dot twenty. Now, coming to router 2, we can as well copy-paste from here. Coming to router 2, we can see that same master router is maintained dot twenty, but it's not local because the dot 20 is an interface ip on router 1 but meanwhile this is a backup state while router 1 is in master state so for the purpose of this test we are going to look back at the topology and configure router 3 to have this ip address then we test an interface switch over to see if the vrp is working so we come to router 3. Router 3 doesn't have much to do. We only have to configure the interface. So we'll go interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Sorry. We assign an IP address 10.0.254.40.255.255.0. And we'll do a no shutdown. So of course from here, when we do a show IP interface brief, we can see that it's up and this is the IP we've assigned. So now what I want us to see from this setup is to have some test scenarios. We have VRP to test if VRP is working or not. So for this reason, we're going to shut down this interface. Interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 which is the master interface of the VRRP. Then we'll see if interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 of router 2 is going to pick up as the master. So, so far we've checked and we confirmed that router 1 is the master and router 2 is the backup. So we're going to quickly go into router 1, config mode, we'll go into interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Oh, sorry. Interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and we'll do a shutdown. Now let's look at the messages from router 2. We can see that the terminal monitor messages just displayed that the state has gone from backup to master. Now let's repeat same command show VRP interface fast Ethernet 0. You can clearly see that it has turned to a master and then for router one which was master before we can see that it's in initial state it's initializing why because the interface is down so let's quickly bring back the interface up to see what happens if router two will remain as the master or router two will turn to a backup interface so we'll now do a no short down so let's quickly look at the terminal messages from router 2. Okay, good. It took some time anyway. But then the state has gone back to backup. So the, the reason why this is working fine and the master router is preempting the backup router to take ownership or to take mastership when the interface on the master router fails is because of the priority value because if we have the same priority then both router will act as a master master router but that's not the aim then this is scenario one for a second scenario i want us to see going to this ip here the 192.168.1.0 slash 30 when it is configured and a static route is configured on router 3 towards this we are going to set a default gateway for default gateway of this now we can as well as turn off this interface just to confirm to see if it will take this part as the next hop so what we do quickly we configure interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 as well for the two routers so we'll come to router 1 go to config mode 
we do interface 0 slash 1 we assign an IP 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.252 and we do a no short down then we also go to oh sorry I'm on router 2 we have to change this back to dot 2 good so we now go to router 1 we can as well like I said do a copy paste but we just have to edit to router 1 we we'll go on interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 we do we paste and we change this to dot 1 and we'll do a no shutdown good so let's let's verify let's see from router 3 which we've configured to be this let's see let's try to ping the interface towards router 1 okay why we cannot get there because it doesn't know how to get to that network so on router 3 we configure a default gateway like i said earlier so we do an ip default gateway 10.0.254.10 and this ip is the vrlp ip so we enter we end we repeat the ping and it's still not going let's try one more thing we have to configure a static route towards that ip such that it knows how to get to that destination so we'll do a configure terminal we add an ip root 192.168.1.0 slash okay oh sorry this is cool 255.255.255.252 take the next stop pass the vrlp ip now this is fine now let's test for that ping again voila now we see we can now ping it knows when we do a trace route for send how does it get there it goes through 20. now this is very important i want us to test for this now i'm going to shut down interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 of router 1 which has the ip address of 10.0.254.20 let's see if it's going to take the 10.0.254.30 so for a quick one i'll come to interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and do a shutdown good so let's test for the ping now it's dying because that interface is shut down and because we don't have a path from router 2 to router 1 we might not be able to get there but let's see if the vrp is working from router 3 towards router 1 and router 2 so normally if i should do a trace route now i should see a dot 30 even though i might not get to my destination but it should take me to dot 30 because vrp is working so let's do a trace route good stuff so you can see that the first hop instead of going to the 20 it took me to the 30 so it means the vrp is working and the mastership and the backup state for the vrp is working as well so i hope this video has been very informative and i would like to thank you for viewing